unfortunately, we have become an overly, I said this before, and these are my last comments, we have become an overly sexualized society. What is praised, what is, what is glorified, is someone who looks more physically attractive. How many billions of dollars of products are being sold to stretch your skin, or to tuck your tummy, or to, you know, enhance your body parts, or whatever, just so you can be more sexually attractive. That's what's being done. This is an entire, and it's, it's a successful industry because people are taking it on, you know, people are biting into it. Then, of course, what's being done for children, because we want sex sells, it sells. It's probably the most successful industry in, in, on the internet even, right? So you want, and it makes money. So then these people who make money, when people make money, all they want to do is make more money. And to make more money, you have to have more customers. But you can't have more customers, you've already got the world hooked on this filth. Oh, we should go after the kids. So what they do now is they have, you know, they have in the music industry, you have this, this vile, disgusting, suggestive, you know, music. And then they have Disney versions of that music. Yeah. Right, so they get you used to that music as a child, so you can transition into the explicit version on your own naturally. Then what they do is they, they, they create a, a cartoons and film, and movies that are supposed to be about one thing, but they introduce extreme sexuality in these movies, and everybody starts watching them. I don't watch these shows, but I know about them because I know students. Students that are studying Islam. People that are learning Deen watching this film. Somebody told me about Game of Thrones, and I was like, it's a great show. I was like, are you serious? That's pornography. Nobody told you? No, no, but the politics, are, yeah, the politics. You should be ashamed of yourself. When you expose yourself to that kind of filth, then you have lost your own dignity. You've slipped from yourself. The animal of you comes out. These eyes have to be guarded. They have to be guarded. That's, that's the first step. And now this stuff is on your mobile devices. You're watching it over and over again. You're exposing yourself to this junk. And you know what you're doing? You're losing your own humanity. You're losing your own humanity. You're not going to be able to have a normal relationship. Yes. Desire, temptation, attraction, these are things Allah put inside of us. But this is one of the things Allah put inside of us, and there are other things. There's a spiritual part of you, there's an intellectual part of you, there's an ambitious part of you, there's a really smart part of you. There are different parts of you, and they all work in harmony. And the purpose of our religion is to give harmony to these things, so one of these things doesn't take over all the others, and it drives you crazy. It's supposed to be this balanced lifestyle. That's what marriage is supposed to be. You know, and I'm not giving you to talk today about marriage, but those of you that are married, you know, we have to work on making our marriages beautiful. So there's no reason to look for temptation outside of marriage. There should be no reason to do that. Marriage itself should be that institution. It's supposed to be that. And if a, if a wife is not there for her husband, if the husband is not there for his wife in that way, there's a serious problem. That's a very serious problem. You know, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So you can find peace in them. You know, sukun is the opposite of harakah. Haraka means you're unstable, you want more. And sukun means you're satisfied and you're settled. Part of that is fulfilling our temptation with our spouse. Being attracted to our spouse, or wanting to be attractive to our spouse. That's part of it. That's a big part of it. That's how we fight temptation. It's not gonna disappear. You know what I'm saying? Just start fasting and doing qiyam al that you'll never think about women again, or men again. Good luck. You'll be able to control it somewhat. But man, Allah programmed that stuff inside of us. He put it in there. He put it in there. And He put it in there for a reason. We have, to, we have to understand what those halal outlets are and make the most of them. Make the most of them. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not giving you an explicit lecture. What I'm trying to tell you is, these are the solutions Allah gave us in our deen. When you don't respect those solutions, bad things happen in society. Bad, bad things happen in marriages. Bad things happen even in our, with our children. It's okay. Inshallah ta'ala, one day our kids, you know, I, I pray that they, they, get, they get into good marriages, they get into healthy, lasting, loving marriages, they get into marriages that they're happy about and their families are happy about. Those are things we want for our children. And we should let them know even from now that that's what we want for them. We want some, someone they like, not someone we like. Our, so many of our kids believe that our parents are going to make us marry whoever they want. So I know I'm not going to be happy, so might as well look for my happiness now. And they're at the age where they're volatile already as it is, and they end up in pretty bad relationships. And then, you know, then they regret it. And all of it began with shaitan telling them, saying, your parents don't understand you. 
So if he first cut them off from their parents, and then he was, then they, he was their, their subject. You know? He, he got them. This is what we have to work on. Parents have to actually now openly talk to their kids. Openly talk and let them know. Parents have to, some of your parents have to change your mindset. I will let you marry who you want. I, I, these are my criteria. Let's negotiate them together. Let's figure them out. And I will let you marry who you want. And I want you to be happy in your marriage. I don't just want this to be about, about my happiness. And so this is my last thing to the parents. My sincere advice to you. I am telling you this because I've been in this line of work for some time. In the line of work of speaking in public and having families come up to me. I cannot begin to count how many families, how many parents have come up to me and said that they, their children have rebelled and run away and you sit there for five minutes and talk to them and you find out why. Why? Because they wanted, they wanted a, the wedding to be a certain way, with a certain person, with a certain family, with a certain status, with all these artificial criteria that would make the parents happy. And one of the last things on the list, maybe she will be happy too. Like they didn't consider that this is about her, about the girl, or about the guy. This is more about them. Marriage is not about you. It's about them. It's their life. They have to spend the next 50 years with this person. Not you. Stop thinking this is about you, or about your dignity, or about what your uncle is going to say, or what your grandfather is going to think. This is not about your grandfather. They already had their fun. <laughs> this is about your kids. This is about your kids. Think about them first. Be open with them first. I know I'm saying things that are hard to hear, but they, this has to be said because we, our kids are falling into sin, man. It's, it's killing me. Two, two years ago, I was speaking at a convention. They asked me to speak about uh, uh, zina. It was a late night session. <laughs> and I have to talk about wala taqrabuza. I'm talking about tawbah. If you've made this mistake, how do you make tawbah? And I was talking for 40 minutes, and there was about 400 people in the audience. 200 boys, 200 girls. And I cannot begin to tell you how many of them were bawling in tears when I talked about if you've made a mistake. Bawling in tears. It kills me. This is happening with Muslim kids. This is happening. And we're not doing anything about it. I, I, I didn't come here to make you feel good, I'm sorry. I came here to make, to remind myself and to remind you this is a real problem. Shaitan's number one agenda. Number one agenda. You know Allah says, his, why, why did he, why did he actually, what did he want? He wanted to go and talk to Adam and her mother, why? So he can get them to pull their clothes off. The goal of shaitan is to pull humanity's clothes off. That's his goal. His goal is not to get you to hell. His goal is to get you to get your clothes off. That's his goal in the Quran. You know what that tells you? Once he does that, it's all easy from there. What's left? That's why the Prophet ﷺ says, if you're not gonna have hayaf of halmat shat, then do whatever you want. Because it won't matter anymore. It won't matter anymore. Save this and we save our iman. Don't save this, iman is gone. His faith is gone. The one thing we have to preserve is our iman. And this is one of the first attacks on our iman. It comes to us every day.